She pulled up to the crime scene tape, Dr. Adelson. She didn't pull up to the crime scene tape. She was driving down the street and then had to make a U-turn. It was blocked off. But she it's wasn't like going she to. she couldn't help herself. Nobody it? knew a murder was going to take place. She exposed you all to some degree by those actions, didn't she? No. What is up, everybody? In this video, I am going to put together the clips from Wendy Adelson's testimony as she discusses where she went on the day Dan Markell was shot. Uh, a little bit after he was shot, he was shot around 11 a.m. on July 18th. And then she discusses what she did that day, particularly what she did um, when she drove around noonish, a little past that. Uh, I have clips from her police interview. I have clips from all her testimony so far. Did she drive by? Her story changes. This is going to be the first in a series of videos I do to prove or to show, in my opinion, why Wendy's going to go down too. I know a lot of people don't think so. I think she's going to go down. And this is the first instance. This is the first video that I'm going to do to show why she is guilty and was part of this conspiracy to kill Dan Markell. I also have some clips from some other witnesses in the trial that discuss what she did, where she went, and did it make sense what she did um, that day and where she went. I don't think so. You be the judge. Let's get into it. Hey, what time you left your house this morning? Yeah, I was there. Um, I didn't leave this morning. I didn't leave until noon. Okay. And oh, my God. And I tried to drive up Trescott, and I saw that it was blocked. Uh, it was blocked at some point. At, I'm not sure what time it was blocked. And I just thought, oh, there's maybe some trees down or something. Cause sometimes oh, you're saying as you drove down which one of the side roads? When I, I'm going to a friend's party tonight, and it's, uh, it's a, it's a, um, oh, my God. What am I even talking about? I needed to buy it's a stock the stock the shelf engagement party and so I went to buy bourbon. Okay. So I went to drive from my place <laughs> up Trescott to get to ABC Liquor and it was blocked. So I just turned around. I was on the phone at the time. I wasn't paying a lot of attention. Right. Um, and I, so I just turned around and drove up the other way. I just thought, oh, well, sometimes there's when I lived in there there were electrical things okay. that would happen. Um, I left my house around 12.15 because I thought I'll get the bourbon and then I'll get some gas for the car and I get super glue for one of the boys' toys and I was trying to do all I can before meeting my two friends at one. I left the house around noon. To go to the liquor store and the stuff for the party? Yeah. Okay, you went down which road you said? I went down Trescott. Okay. I saw a police car there, and I just thought it was blocked, so I just turned around and drove. Um, drove to. Uh, I went down the rest of Centerville, went up Benton to Benton across, went to ABC Liquors, bought the bourbon. I'm a little confused. You're up on up on Centerville Road. What's your purpose of driving down Trescott? It's usually the shortcut to get oh. to Monroe. To get to Monroe? I usually take it as a cut through to get to Thomasville or Monroe. Okay, all right, so you... I don't know why I said Monroe. I was thinking Mosaic Monroe, Th Thomasville. Okay, so when you come down into town on Centerville... I almost always cut through Trescott. Trescott and just drive by your old house? Well, I, I do it as a way of, like, coming to terms with a divorce. But, yeah, I, sometimes I drive there. If I'm too sad, I drive around. Okay. If the kids aren't home and I know they're not home, I feel better about driving by the house. But, yeah, it's shorter and I just usually drive by. It's shorter than going all the way down to Benton? All the way down Centerville and around Benton. It's just right. a shortcut I always took. Okay, so you, you turned around and went back to Centerville, I take it? Yeah. Down to Benton and went to the liquor store down there on Thomasville? Yeah. The one at Benton Road? ABC Liquors, it's at, yeah, Benton. Mm-hmm. All right, let's get into this a little bit because you can already tell Detective Isom is not buying what she's saying. And why is he not buying what she's saying? Let's take a look at the map. She is going from here. She is going um, from here, and she's going here. This, per Google, is the most direct way to get from here to here, from her house to the liquor store, per Google. 
But that's not what she does, is it? She goes this way. She goes. And instead of just staying on that road, instead of just staying on this road, as the first map said, like this, she goes this way. And why does she go this way? Because guess whose house that is? Dan Markell's. She goes that way. And that's what she says uh, in the police interview, which is the same day. She says um, that it's a shortcut. Does this look like a shortcut to you? Doesn't look like it to me. Doesn't look like it to me. So she goes, instead of just going this direct route here, she turns here and makes it like this is some sort of shortcut to get to the liquor store. What do you think? Um, and also spare me her story about how it helps her cope with the divorce or whatever. She was ready. She's the one that filed it. So she's just a lying liar. But this is just the first of many uh, instances where she lies and it doesn't make sense. But anyway, that was her police interview. Now let's see what she says at her first time testifying at Katie and Sigfredo's trial. What does she say about her trip that day? Okay. And did you make any stops between leaving your residence and going to the liquor store? Did I, maybe I purchased gas? Uh, I don't know if you did or not, but I'm referring to your visit to the crime scene. I did not visit the crime scene. Okay. You did not pull up to the crime scene tape on Trescott Drive? No. I was driving on Centerville Road, and sometimes I would take the shortcut through Trescott. Yes, ma'am. But when I was driving on Centerville Road, I saw some sort <coughs> of tape or obstruction, and so I didn't turn. Okay. And then you went from the liquor store straight to the restaurant? Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. And what restaurant was that? What was the name of that restaurant? Mosaic. Mosaic. Okay. All right. The first trial, now five years later. Did she stop by Trescott? No. Because on Centerville, she saw something and she drove by. Does that make sense? Does that add up? First of all, she already said she went on Trescott in the police interview, but in this interview, nope, she didn't go on it. She saw something. Does that make sense? Let's talk to the police officer who set up the crime scene, and let's see if this makes sense. As part of maintaining the crime scene perimeter, is crime scene tape put up across the road? Yes. And did you participate in doing that? I believe so, yes, ma'am. And I think you said it was a couple houses down in each direction is where the tape was placed? Yes. And where were you phys physically positioned? I, my patrol car was blocking the roadway. Alright, and were you on the, don't use north and south because that would be lost on me, were you closest on the side of the scene closest to Centerville Road or closest to the other side of Trescott? Uh, closer to Centerville. All right, it's time to go back to the map. I'm 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 the map. So, here's the deal, folks. What does she say? She says she's on Centerville. She sees something, and she keeps going. And here is the problem with that. If she's on Centerville, and this is on Trescott, where did the officer say the crime scene was? A couple of houses on both sides of Trescott, of Dan Markell's house. So if there's a couple of houses, there's a crime scene a couple of houses away from Dan Markell's house. So, I don't know, one, two, three, this way, which is the way she would have came. How the hell did she see that from down here. How did she see from her story? She saw, she's making it as if right here is the crime scene. But we know that is not the case. 
So again, Wendy is lying. Wendy is lying. So would it have been obvious to someone approaching your position in a vehicle that there was activity, law enforcement activity going on at that residence? It seems, it seems likely. Objection, Your Honor. Or the drone. Jackson. Speculation. as a speculation. You may continue. I'm going to approach and show you what's been introduced into evidence. I'll just publish 18. <coughs> Do you recognize this vehicle? Uh, it looks like a vehicle that I saw approaching the scene <laughs> that day. I'm sorry, will you repeat your answer? It appears to be a vehicle that I saw approaching the scene that day. All right, and this vehicle, are you familiar particularly with the make and model of this particular vehicle? Uh, yes, my wife drove a two, well, we still have it. My daughter drives it now, 2006 Honda Odyssey. So at the time, you had in your family the same type of vehicle? Yes. And did you know at the time that Wendy Adelson drove this type of vehicle? Yes. All right, so you noticed this vehicle or a vehicle identical to this one approach your position? Yes, ma'am. And what did the vehicle do when it approached your position? I uh, just stopped pretty quick and turned around and headed back in the other direction. Did the driver stop and inquire of you what the activity was at the Markel residence? No. Do you know what time of day that was that you observed this vehicle approach the, the roadblock? Uh, sometime a little afternoon, probably and, around closer to one. And just to clarify, were there any <coughs> other roadblocks between where you were positioned and encountered this vehicle and the Centerville intersection? No. And there you go. There is the officer confirming that she drove up to him. He's he's had the same van. It's her van. She drove up to him a couple houses away from Dan's house. She drove to the crime scene, but she doesn't want to admit it. Now, let's see what she says in the second trial of Katie Magbanawa in 2022. Let's see what she says she did then. And then went and ran your errands. On the way to run your errands, did you go by the crime scene? No. On the way to run your errands, did you encounter a roadblock on Trescott? I did. All right, so you did turn off of Centerville onto Trescott. I did. All right, and when you encountered a roadblock, what did you assume the problem was there? I figured it was just an electrical storm or something. There was some, some tape. Um, and it looked like the road was blocked off. And so I just turned around and went back and went up Benton. And had there been an electrical storm that morning? I didn't remember an electrical storm, but in the summertime, there's always trees falling and rainstorms, so pretty normal. Right, and you weren't concerned based <coughs> on that experience that there could be something going on at your, previously your marital home. Absolutely not. And your ex-husband, Dan Markell, had your children at that time, right? No, he did not. <clears throat> okay, so you had your children at that time? No, my children were at preschool at that time. Right, but who took them to preschool that day? Danny would have taken them to preschool. Okay. So it was his day. He was killed on his parenting day. It was the day he would have brought them to preschool and I would have picked them up. All right. Did, he, did they spend the night with him the night before? They did. Okay. And you hadn't seen your children yet that day when you encountered the roadblock? On Friday, no. And were you on the phone when you encountered the roadblock? If you I remember. Was. Do you remember who you were speaking to? I do. Who was that? You don't have to say the name, but just what type of person was that? Um, he was a friend. I hadn't caught up with him a long time. He had moved to England. Um, so I was probably a little distracted um, talking and catching up with an old friend. And when you encountered, at the time that you encountered the roadblock or shortly thereafter, did you call the daycare? No. Did you call, 
Dan Markell. No. Did you do anything to reach out to any of the players that we've talked about in this case? No. Did you communicate to anyone that there was a roadblock? I didn't. I would have had no reason to do that. All right. So second trial, she first says, no, I didn't go by the crime scene, but then admits she gets on Trescott. And then we start getting into, uh, as the officer had said prior, she, if she did drive by the crime scene, which she did, she should have known something was going on at Dan's house. What does she do? Well, we know she's on the phone with this manufactured call that she wanted to be her alibi, but don't you think if she was on the phone, she'd be like, um, I just drove by Dan's house and there's, there's tape and there's, there's law enforcement. Should we do something? No, but she makes it like she didn't even drive by the crime scene, which we know she did. And she, so this is going to come out. This is out, but she drove by the crime scene and does not call the preschool to see how the kids are. Does not call Dan to see what's going on. She doesn't want to admit it. But we know she drove by the crime scene and she's on the phone with someone and they're just chatting it up. So let's see what she says in the third trial. And did you go to the crime scene or very near the crime scene on your way from your residence to, I guess, to lunch or to wherever you were going next? No, I did not. So you never turned on... Trescott Drive that day. I went to turn on Trescott Drive, but I saw that it had been blocked off by some tape, and so mm -hmm. I just kept driving on Centerville. Okay, and when you, you had to turn around at the tape, right, to go back I out? I think I tried to turn right, and it couldn't turn, so I would have made like a the kind of turn, like a K-turn, and kept going. Was there a roadblock there? With There was tape. Yeah, and an officer was there? I didn't a, see an officer, but I did see a car. A, a law enforcement marked mm -hmm. vehicle? Okay. Did you have any contact with the officer? No. Okay. Did you do anything after that to try to find out what was going on down that roadway? No, I just assumed it was weather or maybe a tree fell. Had there been bad weather that day? No, but it was summertime and there's electrical storms and trees fall, so that would have been pretty normal for summertime. Where were your kids supposed to be at the time that you encountered that roadblock? They would have been at school. And that's at the Creative Preschool? That's right. Who took them to preschool that day? Danny. And who was supposed to pick them up from preschool that day? Me. All right. So did you know for sure that they had made it to preschool that day at the time you encountered the roadblock? I just assumed. I mean, if they hadn't made it to preschool, Danny would have let me know. But Did you attempt to call Dan Markell when you encountered the roadblock? No, I didn't think anything of it. I didn't think it was related to the house. All right. So it's 2023 in this trial. Charlie's trial and she is still resistant to say she drove by the crime scene although she admits she goes on Trescott she doesn't want to admit that she drove by the crime scene now we've been discussing how it wouldn't be a shortcut to go by Dan's house to get to ABC Liquors right but here's the question and they're going to discuss this in the next clip with Sergeant Corbett why did she go that way in the first place we know from her police interview and her testimony at around lunchtime, a little bit later, she was meeting her friends at uh, Mosaic to have a lunch together. And she had to get, she wanted to get the liquor first. So here's the question. Let me bring this up here because we're about to get into this in this next clip of testimony. Here's the question. Why, if she is here, is she driving all the way to this liquor store down here? Why is she doing that? She could just go this way, go to Publix Liquors, uh, and then go to Mosaic right there. She could have just went this way. Why on earth did she go all the way down here to get liquor here to then drive all the way back up here? Does that make sense to you? They're going to get into this in the next clip. Why would she do this? After... Um, are you familiar with her statement about her locations on July 18th as far as being at home for her TV repair appointment, then going to ABC Liquors to buy a gift, and then going to lunch at Mosaic? Yes, I am. All right. Based on the her call detail records, were you able to um, um, determine 
where, what time she would have gone by the Trescott Drive area. Yes, we do know the location of her residence at the time here on Aqua Ridge Way. We do know that she was going to the ABC. This was located on Thomasville Road. Um, looking at her records, she has a, a rather lengthy voice call begins at 12.31 p.m. We see that's on a cell site that would be consistent with the general area of her residence. We see at 12.35 p.m., kind of in the middle of the screen here, her handset's now um, kind of halfway between there. And then that call ends at 12.47 p.m. and it ends on a cell site here very close to uh, ABC uh, Liquor Store. So looking at that, <coughs> Again, the receipt time, 1249, the call ending time, 1247. Um, we can kind of approximate that she would have been by the Trescott residence you know, at, at 10 or so minutes earlier than that. Okay, are you familiar with Officer Brandon's statements that he saw a, a person in a, a red van that matched the description of Wendy Adelson's vehicle um, at the roadblock at Trescott Drive? Um, that day in the 12 to 1 o'clock hour. Yes. All right. About what time would she have been in the area of Trescott Drive when she's on her way from home to ABC? Well, again, I would say sometime between 1235 and 1247 or 1249 for sure at the uh, absolute because she would have been in the store at that point um, for the transaction. So some, sometime in that 1240 time frame. Okay. Now, did Dan Markell have he and Wendy Adelson's children the morning of July 18th? He did, yes. All right, and he had taken them to school that morning, right? Yes. All right, looking at um, her cell bright, were you able to see her calls that morning after she would have passed this Trescott Drive area? Yes. All right, after driving by that street, the road being blocked, the crime scene tape, and police cars, did she attempt to contact Dan Markell to make sure he was okay or the kids were okay? Here we've kind of highlighted the calls that were made after that time, starting at 1247, and we can see that they're to a variety of people. Um, none of them were Mr. Markell. Did she attempt to contact uh, Creative Preschool? to make sure the kids made it to school. There wasn't type, some type of incident at the house. She did not. Did she attempt to call 911 or law enforcement to check and see what was going on since her kids were staying on that street? She did not. She just continued on to ABC and then up to Mosaic? Correct. Now, are you familiar with the area at Thomasville Road and I-10 where Mosaic was located back in 2014 when it was around? Yes. Were there any liquor stores in that area back in July of 2014? There were, yes. Okay, which ones? So we have the uh, Publix Liquor Store there off of Thomasville Road, Market Square Liquors, Market Square Shopping Center, and there is another ABC location a little further north on Thomasville Road. What route could she have taken to one of those three liquor stores? Of many, the one of the routes is the one depicted here by the red dashed lines, um, which would have taken her up Centerville Road and then over to Thomasville and down to Mosaic. What route did she actually take to go to the ABC liquor down on Thomasville and then to Mosaic? We can see here her um, path would have been the purple line and the shortest distance again being the red dotted line. Now I know, I mean obviously that looks like the shortest distance, but how much shorter are we talking about? Oops. So we can only, uh, our mapping, our GIS software is able to provide uh, approximate travel times and distances, kind of like Google Maps. Um, and so what we can see is that the miles for the shortest route would have been 3.63 and they estimate travel time in about 11 minutes. The uh, other travel was almost nine and a half miles which they estimate travel at a little over 20 minutes. All right, folks, and those are the clips regarding the testimony from Wendy Adelson regarding her driving by the crime scene on the date Dan Markell is shot. Am I making a bigger deal of this than it is? I don't know. You tell me. I think it's going to be a big deal to a jury that she won't admit that she drove by the crime scene or that she did drive by the crime scene, which we know she did, and she didn't check on her kids. And she didn't call 
Dan, if she really didn't know what happened, wouldn't that be the first thing she did? I would think so. I don't know. You guys, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think. Thanks so much for uh, watching. If you could like, sub, share, it's always appreciated. Thanks so much. Give me two caps and a Ric Flair.